House Speaker Nancy Pelosi regains or retains control of the articles of impeachment against President Trump for now. She says she's waiting to decide what to do with them until she knows how the Republican-controlled Senate intends to proceed with the case. Last night's House vote to impeach the president marks the first time we've seen this type of vote in 21 years. President Trump is the third president in the nation's history to be impeached. The previous two, Bill Clinton in 1998 and Andrew Johnson in 1868. President Trump insists he's done nothing wrong. He tweeted late last night a meme with a photo of himself. It's captioned with, quote, in reality, they're not after me, they're after you. I'm just in the way. Duke Carter's following this story, and Duke U.S. representatives from Louisiana have spoken out about this. What are they saying? Hey, good morning, Leslie. Well, many people are going to be waking up to the news in just a few hours that the U.S. House of Representatives have voted to impeach President Donald Trump on two articles of impeachment. And many Democratic leaders from the U.S. House of Representatives are saying this is what they were looking for because they say that the president's behavior is just unacceptable. And so there are two articles of impeachment that we're talking about. The first is abuse of power. According to the Dems, that's in relation to getting Ukraine to get involved with the 2020 elections. The second is for obstruction of Congress. And again, according to the Dems, President Trump directed executives, executive branch agencies to not comply with subpoenas related to the impeachment inquiry after news got out about the Ukraine government interference with the 2020 election. Well, here's what both members of, of sides in the U.S. House of Representatives are saying. Take a listen. President Trump on January 20th, 2017, raised his hand and swore to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. Now we must preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution from him. Madam Speaker, I rise today not to disparage and embarrass the President of the United States, but to defend our precious democracy. I speak today not because I hate this President, but because I love this body, the People's House. They fear. They call this Republican map flyover country. They call us deplorables. They fear our faith. They fear our strength. They fear our unity. They fear our vote and they fear our president. We will never surrender our nation to career establishment D.C. politicians. I'm taking this seriously, but my perception so far, impeachment is motivated more by Democrats hating Donald Trump and not pursuit of justice. And by the way, impeachment is sucking up the time and energy that could be used for positive things. Now, the next step, of course, is, well, the Republican Senate deciding on what they would see if uh, President Donald Trump will be impeached. Now, the last time we did see impeachment, as Leslie mentioned, was with Bill Clinton, but that was with a Republican-controlled House of Representatives, but he was later acquitted by the Senate. We'll, of course, have more on this later this morning, but for now, reporting live, Duke Carter, Eyewitness News. Duke, thank you very much. And we mentioned that the next step in President Trump's impeachment is to head to the Senate for a trial in the new year. But how does the trial differ from the hearings in the House? Our verified team looks into how both processes are different. Article 1 of the U.S. Constitution. The House of Representatives shall have the sole power of impeachment. Quote, the Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments. Simple, right? The House impeaches a president, the Senate holds the trial. Well, no, not that simple. We've had weeks of testimony in House committees. We heard from advisors, former ambassadors, and more. But when it comes to the Senate, the trial itself could look completely different. Take another look. The Constitution says the Senate will hold the trial, that the senators will be on oath, and that it will take two-thirds vote to convict. But it leaves everything else up to the Senate. So big questions like, will there be witnesses? Have to be debated. In President Andrew Johnson's impeachment, 40 witnesses testified in public. In President Clinton's impeachment, after long debate, witnesses requested in private and videotape clips were played to the Senate. So you can see it's different each and every time. Historically, the Senate majority and minority leaders have worked together to develop the rules. Now that's Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer in this case. They both said they want to come up with bipartisan rules like in the past, but it's worth noting the Republicans have enough Senate members to vote through rules without any Democratic support. One last note, the Constitution also says that the Supreme Court Chief Justice will oversee the trial. Now, Chief Roberts in this case could allow witnesses or rule changes that aren't explicitly written out. But unlike a judge in a courtroom, Justice Roberts can actually be overruled. If a majority votes against his ruling, it's overturned. Bottom line, the Senate holds the power here and they will determine not only the rules for the trial, but how those rules are actually carried out. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. And we expect to see many U.S. lawmakers talking about impeachment today. 
These are live pictures from Capitol Hill where we expect to get a lot of reaction. Stay with the Eyewitness Morning News at 6 o'clock. A political scientist from UNO will join us to offer some perspective on the House's impeachment votes and what that means for the country. While you're on the go, you can stay plugged in to impeachment updates on our app and our website.